Hi friends, I'm Bulin. Welcome to mytechbits.com, a collection of my technical bits and pieces of information, online tools, calculators and converters. You are now watching mytechbit.com's video session. In today's session, we'll go through the downloading and installation process of SQL Server 2014 Developer Edition. To start with, let's see the hardware and software requirements. If you are planning to install the SQL Server on a PC, then you need Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or higher. For Server, you need Windows Server 2008 Service Pack 2 or higher. And .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 is mandatory. In the hardware side, you need Intel processor with a minimum of 1.4 GHz and a minimum of 1 GB RAM and 6 GB of hard disk space. The SQL Server Developer Edition is freely available for developers through the Visual Studio Dev Essentials program. To download the setup file, go to the Visual Studio Dev Essentials website. The URL is displayed here. I have also provided the URL below the video in the description section. Let's go to the Dev Essentials website and download the Developer Edition. On logging into the Dev Essentials dashboard, you can see the download link for the Developer Edition. On pressing the download link, you will be navigated to the download page. In the download page, select the bit type and language and then press the download arrow to download the ISO file. The ISO file will be around 2.5 GB for 32 bit type and 3 GB in case of 64 bit type. Based on your internet speed, the download may complete within few minutes or may take more than an hour. Once you have downloaded the ISO file, go to the download location and mount the ISO file by double clicking it. Then go to the mounted drive and double click the setup file. It will launch the SQL Server Installation Center window. In the installation center window, go to installation panel. Select the new SQL Server standalone installation option. It will launch the setup window. In the setup window, you have to follow the instructions in the screen and press next to navigate. The first step will be the product key section. As you are installing the free developer edition, the product key will be already available by default. So just press the next button. In the license term section, accept the license. Then you can either choose the customer experience improvement program or ignore it and press next. The setup will now check the global rules and progress to the Microsoft update section. It will be a good practice to select the check for Microsoft update option but it's optional. Either choose the option or leave it and press next. As I was selected the check for update option, the setup will check for Microsoft latest update and install them if available. Once completed, press next. Now the setup files required for the installation process will be installed and proceeds to the installation rule checking step. The rule checkup is now over. As you can see, there is a warning. The warning is due to the firewall. As it is just a warning, I am ignoring it and moving to the next step. In the setup role screen, there will be three options. The first option is SQL Server Feature Installation. This option is selected by default. With this option, you will have the capability of selecting each and every individual SQL Server components during the installation process. The second option is for installing SQL Server Power Pivot for SharePoint. If you already have a SharePoint installed, then you may need this option. The final option is the default all feature installation. This option will install all the components of SQL Server using the service account. This will be the faster installation process. For this session, I am choosing the first option, SQL Server Feature Installation. Now I am moving to the next step. In this step, you can select the features you want to install. 
I'm choosing all the features now. If you want, you can select only the features you need and you can ignore the others. In case if you are a beginner, then I would suggest to choose all the features now. After a few months of using the SQL Server, you will realize which features can be ignored and which is needed. If you notice, you can see the disk space required for installing the selected features and the space available in the default drive. At this stage, you can change the hard disk drive or the folder of installation. Once done, proceed to the next step. The setup will now check for the prior requirements of us based on the features we have selected in the previous step. My PC does not have .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1. So the rule checker threw an error. Now I have to install the .NET 3.5 before proceeding further. To install .NET 3.5 at this stage, just leave the setup and open the Windows features on or off screen and activate .NET 3.5. Once the activation is complete, go back to the SQL Server setup screen and press Rerun to recheck the rules. Once the rules are successfully passed, the setup will move to the instance configuration step. In the instance configuration step, you can change the name of the SQL Server instance if you want. For now, I am leaving this to default instance and moving to the next step. In the server configuration step, you can change the startup type of the SQL Server services. For example, if you don't want the reporting services to start automatically on booting the PC, then change the startup type to manual. After setting the desired startup type for other services, move to the next step. In the database engine configuration step, by default, Windows authentication mode will be selected but I would recommend to select the Mixed mode. In Mixed mode, you can have two modes of logging in to the SQL Server, the Windows credentials and the SQL Server credentials. For Mixed mode, you have to enter the password for SA login and add a Windows user as SQL Server administrator. After filling these details, press Next. In the Analysis Services configuration, add a Windows user for the Analysis Service Administrator and move on to the next step. In the reporting services configuration, you can select the install only option to just install the service now and later on do the configuration to integrate with IIS. Or you can choose install and configure option to do all the configurations now itself. For this session, I am choosing install only option and press next. In the distributed replay controller step, add a Windows user for permissions and move on to next. You can leave the Distributed Replay Client section as it is and press Next. The setup will now check the feature configurations and list down all the features so far we have selected. The setup is now ready to install. You can now press the Install button. The installation process will go on for several minutes. Once complete, the setup screen will list down the status of installation of all the features. Now you can close the setup window. We are done with the installation. SQL Server Developer Edition is ready for your use. We will now see how to connect to the SQL Server. You can connect to the newly installed SQL Server through the SQL Server Management Studio. To launch the Management Studio, go to Start and look for the SQL Server Management Studio and press the icon. In the login window, by default, the current logged in Windows credential will be set. As we have opted for mixed mode during installation, you can log in to Management Studio either using the Windows credential or using SQL Server credentials like the SA login. Once logged in, in the left panel under the instance name, you can see the installed system databases and the system objects. We will see more about using SQL Server Management Studio in the next session. If you like this video session, do subscribe my channel and share it with your friends. Also join us in social networks like Facebook and Google+. For more technical articles, online tools, calculators and converters, check out my website mytechbits.com. M-Y-T-E-C-B-I-T-S.com 
see you again with some more interesting technical sessions until then bye bye